Hey friends, welcome back to another video with CCM Live. And today we're going to talk about something that's probably affecting all of us, especially here in America. That is phone addiction. Now, in my opinion, it is pretty much a virtual jail brainwashing your little brains. And they want you to respond a certain way when you utilize your phone, rather than responding pretty much based on your own values and principles. Uh, so this is pretty much your responsibility. And what that means is pretty much uh, this is an external factor, which then most of you guys like external factors determine the way you are going to respond or behave. And quite frankly, most of us respond in a negative way. Anyway, that's kind of another topic that I'll be touching on shortly in the future about responsibility. Uh, but the point is, they pretty much turn you guys into like walking zombies and NPCs in our own lives. So, I mean, personally, I was hooked onto my own phone. I played with settings, automation, like Tasker, uh, which is not a bad thing, but it consumed a lot of my time. Uh, and I started learning about questionable tools that, I mean, got me nowhere. Then I got into Snapchat, which that got me into a serious addiction of trying to get my score up. And then, it, I mean, it just consumed like at least four or five hours of my day with at the end like I didn't achieve anything so what are we really trying to achieve uh, by spending hours and hours and hours at a time per day on social media and stuff you know and I mean phones are really designed to keep us hooked and you know why because especially in social media they try to get your attention and the t uh, attention they get is to form a real estate that they use in order for companies or other parties uh, to pretty much utilize. I mean, if they can get your attention, they have your real estate, and that's kind of what they're paying for. Um, and they condition us to have these short life or short memory spans as well. Uh, many of you may not even finish this video because of that reason, you know? You just kind of look at this and like, eh, okay, whatever. So, I mean, some stats that I found interesting were that like 48% of people feel anxious when their uh, phone battery drops below 20. Or 71% of smartphone owners sleep with their phones. And something else I found with that too is if you keep it off of airplane mode and charging, it kind of uh, release, releases these like electromagnetic fields that seem pretty harmless too. Um, we unlock our phones 150 times per day on average and spend over four hours on them daily and most of it i'm sure it's not you guys like learning a skill like duolingo or some shit it's probably you guys like trying to like be on social media so and they'll spend five years and four months on their lifetimes on social media to me that's crazy and i feel like that should actually be more but this is based on some studies that i found so well, how do they keep us up? Well, I think uh, they make it very easy for everything to happen, pretty much. And that's kind of any habit that really happens as well. Um, when you get bored or you're tired or something, it's easier for you to just open up your phone. I mean, right now I can just be like, well, you know what? I don't really want to talk to you guys. I just want to get on my phone and blah, blah, blah. I just unlocked it with my thumb as opposed to like getting using my little pads of uh, the numbers or whatever and then I can just open up whatever app I want it makes it so much easier um, and everything is within our fingers you know like you want to order food you can do it from your phone you want to do any like you can do it from your phone if you feel bored they make it so easy for you to just turn on your phone and be able to access whatever you want um, and that's one of the like bad of forming or a way to form a habit pretty much is how easy it is to acquire and then the pleasure that comes with it too is the increasing your dopamine which is all fake dopamine um it's a satisfaction you get just from opening your phone getting a notification or being engaged in this fake world all the time pretty much um and it's all about personalization too they personalize everything that they think you're going to like or will like, and they kind of put it all in front of your face, so then you're hooked on pretty much to that, like, all that time. Like, for instance, uh, we've created this uh, SRT Apocalypse uh, Instagram, and literally because it's all about cars, literally a 
RAM TRX and the Hellcat, all we get is content about those things. So, I mean, they kind of like tailor it down to what you're probably going to like. And I mean, there's a lot of car con content too, but it's mainly all about that. So, I mean, these algorithms uh, pretty much show us what they're, we're going to like and uh, what you're most likely going to click on, all these ads that you might like and everything. They literally track you every single move, even sometimes outside of the actual so social media itself. And having built uh, or started a agency where we focus on social media marketing, I can kind of say to that that, I mean, there are things like uh, Facebook pixels and other uh, ways where they kind of, especially if you click on an ad, it can actually track your every single move of what you're doing uh, just to see what's going on. You know, that way they can kind of like track and see like they'll use the algorithms or whatnot. Now it said, I don't know that the algorithms are a little hidden to the way they work, but it seem they seem to be pretty, pretty intense. So, uh, and they have other features like stories and reels and blah, blah, blah. So, uh, and then you can do the comments, messages, but I mean, it's all, at the end of the day, it's a fake connection that you're pretty much involved in, you know. You get all these notifications, and like I was saying with Snapchat, like you get these scores, and uh, I mean, it's super easy for us to really find content that we really enjoy, but at the end of the day, you're wasting your time in a virtual world that's going to grant you absolutely nothing, you know? Um and I mean, with that being said, simply just reducing your phone time can improve your dr life drastically. And that's happened to me lately. And that's kind of why I started this too, this video, because you'll just experience a lot of positiveness, positive, positive is not even a word. Anyway, any, a lot of positive movements in your life because you just moved to making a real, uh, like good moves in your life overall. Um, you'll have better mental health, reduced anxiety, improved sleep, and you will feel a lot more accomplished overall. Uh, your productivity will increase because now you can focus on better things in your life, such as with me, with the business. And I'm pointing over here because my computer's over here, but this is a screen where it's at. Uh, but things will just actually get done. Plus, your relationships will actually get stronger as you become more present and engaged in face-to-face -face interactions. And you can actually, like, listen to people and actually connect with them. And you'll be able to enjoy on things you missed out. You'll be able to go outside, breathe the fresh air, which I'm sure a lot of you guys are living inside. Which, being kind of in a monk mode, I was living inside, and it feels great to be outside just because I'm stuck here doing a lot of computer stuff and wizardry and all this stuff with computers and trying to get the business going but you get the idea going outside actually helps you a lot especially that vitamin d which a lot of us are missing from just being exposed to the sun um you actually have time to build projects starting something new building a new skill that converts you into someone who's a higher valued person overall um you literally feel liberated and as soon as you find out how much time you really have, you're actually going to utilize it to build your own little empire, your own little world, your own little dynasty, if you want, uh, like a little garden of your own, which will keep flourishing even more and more until you are someone who is utterly unrecognizable. And only then will you realize that you are actually winning in life and you're actually doing something good. And... You're going to be more of a free thinker too. Things will just get done and you'll have more time to sit down and think for yourself as opposed to people feeding you. And you'll be able to make those judgments and make better values and principles based on that stuff. And as time goes by, you'll be able to create a much, much bigger garden that's so beautiful and all these butterflies want to go there. And that's something I kind of want to, another video I kind of want to make about. So anyway, how do you really get out of like these bad habits of utilizing your phone for instance um set the boundaries for yourself and there's really no better person than you you know i think one of the things that I, even i struggled with was um setting yourself accountable if you sit there and you don't set yourself self accountable 
then no one's going to do that for you. You can have an accountability partner, but at the end of the day, they can't be there 24-7 for you. So you can you have to do things for yourself, and you have to be res- responsible, the ability to respond for yourself. Now, you can create, like, no phone zones. Like, personally, when I work and I try to work, I try to keep my phone away, airplane mode, all the way over there. Don't even touch it. Um, unless you need it for work, of course. But, I mean, the only times I personally need it is when I need to log into my personal Gmail. And I think, like, the Gmail that hooks up to this YouTube. But that's literally about it. Um, otherwise, I really don't use it until it's, like, 1 p.m. Don't check it in the morning. Don't, like, don't worry about it. Like, um, if you're really that important where you have to have your phone, I mean... Okay, but at that point, you're probably working towards something else anyway. But seriously, don't let it consume you or even, like, make you respond a certain way. Um, And, I mean, even personally, like, I try not to have my phone to be, like, the primary source of communication. Literally, all my business inquiries go to our official messaging app or, like, email pretty much. So, literally, there's no way. And if I'm working, I have WhatsApp here which I don't even open. It's only there, like, every everyone is muted, minus two people. And that's because if they need something, they know to message me through that, so. And they know, you have to set those boundaries too with people. Like, they know, like, don't message me these times unless, like, you really need me. So, monitor your usage as well. So, like, set, like, a tracking app. I know some of them are integrated. I have Android, for instance. It tracks pretty much what apps you're using, how often. And then it kind of gives you like a nice chart of like you've used this app uh, on average this much time and these are kind of like the times and everything. So, And I find like the only time I really use my phone for like more than an hour at a time and that's because I set this up for myself is when I'm using Duolingo to learn Russian. So <laughs> that's the only time like it's open for more than an hour at a time. Um, sometimes when I'm doing like a CCM Live or whatever but... That's mostly computer stuff right now. Um, engage in offline activities. I mean, most of us are so stuck with these and like every single day, this is all we do. Um, you don't need a screen to involve your life. I mean, people lived without phones before. So start reading, start exercising, spending time with family and friends. They have an emotional bank account too. And if you're feeding your emotional bank account to this, they're not going to take any reliability on you. They're not going to really invest in you. You you don't become a trustful source of income from that emotion. And so you're just someone out there. And simply even just having your phone like on the table, whether it, even if it's face down when you're engaging with someone, you go out on a restaurant with someone, to me that's disrespectful because to me it's telling me that you are not that important, not as important as a person who might send me a message. And this is kind of boring. That's what you're, the vibe you're sending pretty much. And most of you guys don't even have a lot of stuff squared away in your own lives and that you want to spend some time on this thing and call it free time. So you just got to create those good habits, you know, and that goes even outside of phone usage, really. You got to create those good habits of using your phone less. And like I said, probably even get an accountability partner of like, I don't know, whether you're living with your spouse, with your sibling, someone, someone to tell you like, don't be using your phone. Let's go do something or hey, clean your room. Just something, you know, square away your life first before you use you spend your time on this thing um and i mean some of this advice has come from two great books in particular the first one is atomic habits which just deals with a lot of like creating healthy habits overall so and how to identify good habits and how to identify bad ones and then how to reinforce the good ones and how to break from the bad ones um and the second one is the seven habits of highly effective people Um, which is not just, like, the seven habits, but it also kind of goes, like, into a lot of detail about, like, values and uh, paradigms, which is kind of, like, perspective. Um, It gets you a lot of insight about life, too. 
and how people value you as well. So, and in order to be interdependent, which means you work together with other people, you need to be independent efficiently first. So I think that's where a lot of us kind of fall back and and we suck. We think independence is great and that's what we want to achieve, but in reality, that's that's not the truth. So you kind of want to make major wins with other people. But that's aside from the fact that the, these are a lot of videos that I can always interconnect. Um, I've never really had this, so this is why I'm kind of promoting these things to you guys now. So um, that's kind of it in terms of the phone topic I wanted to cover. So don't waste your time on this thing. Waste your time on this thing. Um, in terms of business, uh, we pretty much finished all the sales component of everything. And now we're going to focus on a lot of the service delivery, which is creating the ads, uh, actually posting them, how do we do it, all that. And I started hiring a creative person uh, creative meaning like the actual advertisement, not like something creative. So, although it does end up being something that they create. So, um, but the actual like advertisement person, and then eventually like we want to grow to the point where we also have like a copywriter, which is going to be us, the copywriter. Um, and then the, the idea is to have it to the point where it's so self-sufficient, so autopilot, I don't even need to be there. And I'm still winning. So that's the whole goal. As of now, we're starting. So baby steps. Uh, so yeah, I'm very happy. A lot of cool things hopefully coming in the future. A little scared, but I know God's with me. So but anyway, thanks for watching, everyone. And if you find this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and share it with someone who really might benefit from it or who you think uh, needs a little nudge in life and like, hey, uh, then you can learn a few things here. So, And uh, don't forget to subscribe to CCM Life as well for more insights and tips, uh, like living a balanced life, a fulfilling life. Because, uh, I mean, that was not living that. That was a lazy, fat slug, literally. <laughs> Cheater, too. Like, I cheated all my life. Like, uh, let me take that back. I cheated, but I never really tried. It was always like, you're good enough, go. You're good enough, go. So, and I've never really, like, actually mastered a skill enough to be better than even my competitors on their uh, best day. So, the whole idea is to be just good enough on your worst days to be your competitors on their best days, so... And I was just never that. I just kind of got by, just kind of, yeah, whatever, 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 you know. And there's more to life than to that, you know. And I had no sense of direction. And I feel like if you find that sense of direction, it'll help a lot. So, uh, kind of why I started this. So, keep follow, keep following if you're looking for that sense of direction, if you're looking for your purpose in life. Uh... Because I'll be talking more about that in the future. So stay connected in a healthy way and take care. See you guys.